All right. Uh, so today we have another special guest. It's quite a week with special guests. Uh, our seventh of the week, uh, Chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, Cecilia Rouse, a member of the President's Families Cabinet. And I'm so happy I don't have to put my mask back on. Okay, come on over. Great. Thank you. Okay. The efficiency and speed with which we have rolled out the vaccinations, even surpa surpassing President Biden's own initial and I might say ambitious goals, has meant that the United States has made tremendous pro progress at curbing the virus. As a result, we are in the midst of restarting this economy in earnest. We believe that it's complicated, but that the labor market will be healing, and we are standing at the ready, and we want to encourage that to happen um, as quickly as safely possible. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Can I get your reaction to this report about unaccompanied minors being held in uh, park buses overnight? There was one child reportedly held for four days before being reunited with his family. What's the administration doing now about this case? And when you say that you're going to ensure that those responsible are held accountable, what does accountability look like? In this case? Well, first let me say that the reports of children that you've referenced being held in buses outside of HHS, uh, of the HHS facility in Dallas for extended periods of time are outrageous, they're unacceptable, and they do not meet our standard for child care. That is true for the President. It is true for the Secretary of Homeland Health and Human Services. It is true for everyone involved across government. Uh, it's being fully investigated how we got to this point, how this possibly happened. Uh, there's no excuse for this kind of treatment in terms of what the consequences will be. I just can't predict that before an investigation is concluded. Go ahead. Thank you. There are a lot of questions about the timing of the CDC's announcement yesterday. So. Did somebody at the Biden administration or in the Biden administration update this guidance for political reasons? No. But just looking at the CDC's website on the way up here, only 45.6% of U.S. adults have been fully vaccinated as of yesterday. Only 58.9% of the adult population have, has at least one dose. So what happened to President Biden saying in March that he thought lifting mask mandates before every adult American goes and gets a shot is Neanderthal thinking. So does the president still think that these red state governors who were a little bit ahead of the federal government in lifting the mask mandates had Neanderthal thinking? Well, again, I would say that even with this guidance that's out there, the guidance is not uh, telling uh, states and localities exactly how they should implement. Andy Slavitt said this morning that the White House found out the mask guidance was going to change at 9 p.m. the night before. Were you guys surprised that in the 9 o'clock hour at 9.25 the CDC director was on CNN saying that the science wasn't there yet? Uh, I didn't watch that interview. I can just tell you that a small number of uh, that they were, we were informed the night before uh, that the guidance that they made a decision about the guidance they plan to announce it the next day. And even here, only a small number of people knew that that announcement was going to be made. Hence, if you were here yesterday, you saw kind of shock of people taking off their masks around the building. Uh, but you know, it may have been at the point where they were not ready to make the announcement yet. But I I point you to the CDC on their specific rollout plan. Go ahead. And what do you say to those who are criticizing the president and vice president who have not to date made an in-person visit to the southwest border? Who are those? Who are those? Those who have criticized. There have like been, who? There have been lots of people criticizing the fact that they've not made a, a trip to the border yet. Like who? Criticism from those in the Republican Party, criticism from others. Well, I don't know who I'm responding to, uh, but what I will say is that the president's focus I'll and the- Just the other day, um, one of the senators held a press conference where that was a major criticism. The fact one of the that senators, okay. We're less worried about press conferences or political games that are being played by some. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. Okay, hello. Um, well, we have a special guest, as we like to do on Fridays. Um, so, Mayan Schechter, nice to meet you. That's a beautiful name from the state. Um, how can we help you? In South Carolina, we're looking at another incident of an unarmed black man dying while in police custody. This time, a man named Jamal Sutherland. Thank you for your question. Let, let me first say that um, we, uh, of course, have closely watched and are very aware of the case that you're referring to in South Carolina and know it's been a dominant issue over the last several days or longer there. Uh, I can't speak to the specifics of it given there's an investigation. But what I can say is that uh, the president's focus uh, and belief is that police reform is long overdue, uh, that far too often um, communities of color are living in fear 
uh, and are exhausted by the threat uh, and the possibility of, uh, of being in harm's way. And they should not feel that way. Um, he has set a timeline that he would like to see uh, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act uh, pass by May 25th, which is also the anniversary of his death. Uh, the negotiations and discussions are happening now uh, with one of your home state uh, me members, Senator Tim Scott, along with Senator Cory Booker uh, and uh, Congresswoman Karen Bass. Uh, they're having discussions. Those are ongoing, and he is hopeful and looking forward to having a bill uh, to his desk so he can sign it into law. But we are very engaged with them uh, and keep abreast of the discussions, um, but we are leaving it to them to have a lot of the negotiations among themselves, uh, among members. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us in the briefing room today. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you.